Hello again, fellow Beach Bum Traders. Thank you for joining us for part two of our weekly trading game plan for the trading week of April 15th through April 19th. We're in part two of our weekly trading game plan. We'll be selecting our top swing trading stocks to watch, stocks in our bullpen, stocks in our shopping list. We'll also look at a variety of dividend paying stocks and how you can use dividend paying stocks to generate income while you wait for your swing trading stocks to set up. And we'll also look at several option strategies as additional ways to generate income again while we wait for our swing trading stocks to watch to set up properly. So let's get started. Welcome, Nagam. Thank you for joining us in the chat today. Hope you're doing well. So here's our notes for part two of our weekly trading game plan for April 15th through April 19th. We keep our notes for our weekly trading game plans in publicly accessible Google Documents. Our notes contain links to bonus videos, tools, and resources we use to watch and trade our top swing trading stocks to watch. You can find a direct link to this Google document in the description box below. If you haven't already seen part one of our weekly trading game plan for this week titled Make Money Trading Tax Week, we would highly recommend that you view part one as well as that contains our market analysis, our trade strategies, and trade ideas for this trading week. We keep all of our Google documents with our notes uh, for our weekly trading game plans in publicly accessible Google Drive folder, so you can refer back to the notes for part one of this week as well as previous weeks. And again, you can find a direct link to that Google Drive folder in the description box below. Welcome, Alan Krantz, Ricky Khan, Gerald Fitz. Glad to see you all in the chat today. Hope you all are doing well. So firstly, we'll quickly go over trade updates for this week, and then we'll jump into our watch list. So our trade update for this week is we finally got stopped out of our long positions in SLBO. SLBO is a monthly dividend paying ETN on silver. We've had this for a long time. We've been collecting monthly dividends um, that get reinvested uh, automatically via a dividend reinvestment program, also called a DRIP. The account that I was holding these positions in, I didn't have any option. It was always a dividend reinvestment. So that lowered our cost basis on those positions. So given our cost basis, when we got stopped out at $79.94 on the 12th, we got a profit of about 4.8%. So again, considering the total reduction in the cost basis on our positions in SLBO uh, via this trip. So congratulations to all of our fellow Beach Bum traders who also profited from this long-term uh, trade on uh, SLBO. So if I look at that just very quickly in Weeble, so we can see we saw yesterday silver um, very briefly uh, popped up to near 30. So we see SOBO popped up. I had a stop. Actually, my stop was around uh, just around 80. And you can see this is a little choppy gappy. Again, another risk in some of these uh, lightly traded, uh, somewhat illiquid stocks is the gap down through my stop eventually stopped me out uh, again at 79.94, a little less than uh, where I had my stop. But again, for a decent profit of about 4.8%. And again, we see that brief rollover in uh, silver. So again, congratulations if you uh, made a nice profit either via a uh, drip or uh, collecting your monthly dividends on SLBO. And Gerald Pitts is pointing out, yes, and uh, some ETFs. And we looked at the silver ETFs yesterday. AGQ is a bull 2X long on silver. And ZSL is the short uh, leveraged um, short on silver. And again, we looked at the gold and silver uh, ETFs yesterday. Just a quick reminder. If you would like to get uh, real-time alerts when we enter or exit a trade, you can get a real-time notification by joining any level of our Patreon. I post our entries and exits to our Patreon. You'll get an uh, email notification. Also, we have several channels in our Discord that are available to our Patreon members. So I have a Thinkorswim 
alerts channel where I set up um, price alerts and thinkorswim. When those get triggered, they get automatically posted to this thinkorswim um, channel. So you can see when my uh, order on SLVO got triggered. And then if we follow that up with an actual trade, I would reply in the thinkorswim alerts channel. You can also see we got a, a notification late on Friday that HIMX had uh, hit its um, price target of what we were watching. So again, we, as you'll see, we'll be watching HIMX. I have not yet taken a trade in HIMX, but again, that's one we'll talk about that we're watching. If, it, if I make a trade not directly related to a um, thinkorswim trade alert, I would post that in the trade alerts channel so you could see when we went long on GDXD, which is the short on uh, gold miners. I posted that in the trade alerts channel. We also have a real time alerts channel where we have uh, real time automated, automatically generated alerts when, when stocks are moving up, breaking out near our price targets. And you can hear how that uh, real time alert system works and how you can get real-time alerts uh, in our alerts channel via that link to that video in our notes. So again, if these uh, would help you make money trading, again, a great way to see, you know, we saw Yang breaking out, TSLA, Tesla moving up, et cetera. So it, it can help you uh, see short-term trends. There's the VIX, when the VIX turn back around, SVXY. So again, if this helps you uh, make money trading, helps you in your trading career, again, you can get all of those alerts um, via joining any low level of our Patreon. Welcome Easy Mike, Carmen, Logan Flitz, Hits, Logan Flips, glad to see you all in the chat today. Hope you all are doing well. Okay, let me grab a quick drink and we'll go over our top swing trading stocks to watch. We'll go over the updates in our notes and then we'll also look at those in our watch list Google Sheet and also in Weeble. Just a quick note while I'm here, um, yesterday we talked about as well that Weeble is now offering futures trading and I have a post for that um, special offer for Weeble now offering futures trading posted in our Discord. So again, if you're a futures trader interested in trading futures, you can now trade futures and get uh, free stocks by joining Weeble. So again, you can find more details about that. They're offering uh, zero commissions, et cetera, free level two data um, by funding your futures account with $1,000 or more. And again, now you can trade futures also in Weeble. So again, you can access that uh, details uh, via the link in our notes. And if you'd use our affiliate link to Weeble, if you're not already using Weeble, again, you can also get free fractional shares of stock up to like a 4.5% match of contributions in your IRA, 5% uh, interest on your uninvested cash, etc. So if you're not already using Weeble, uh, we highly recommend it. We use it for our market analysis, our due diligence, majority of our trading. So we hope that helps. Good morning, MD. Thank you for joining us. Hope you're doing well. So here's our updates to our top swing trading stocks watch watch list for this week. 
we're going to take boil out of our um, watch list boil again is the leverage long on natural gas um, as we saw yesterday natural gas just kind of chopping around the 170 mark we were looking for a retest of the bottom at about 152 uh, we can continue to watch uh, boil again boils the long on natural gas in our etfs uh, google sheet again cold kold is the short on natural gas and again we can watch those in our etfs google sheet i don't need to keep it on our watch list it doesn't look like we're going to get that retest uh, in the very near future I've left GDXD in here. GDXD, again, is the leverage short on gold miners. We are already long on GDXD as of 4.2. Again, I was a little early, a little premature in that. And then we saw gold surge up through 2,300, through 2,350, test uh, 24, and then bounce off, get rid of 24. So, uh, possibly some opportunities, short-term trading. Uh, and again, we're still holding that position, waiting for a correction. And I'll take profit in that because uh, I think the long-term trend in gold is still up. So the inverse of GDXD um, is GDXU. So if you want a long gold with leverage, GDXU. And there are other shorts we looked at yesterday, and you can hear our evaluation of the various uh, ETFs to short gold via that link to um, that video in the notes. So again, uh, there's alternatives, Dust, DZZ, GLL, and you can pick the one that has the best risk reward profile uh, for how you would like to short gold. Um, and again, use our ETF uh, Google Sheet to evaluate those risk reward profiles. Okay, we talked about HIMX. We just saw HIMX uh, late on Friday hit our uh, one of our price targets, which is about 522. Uh, HIMX is a semiconductor, Taiwanese semiconductor company. We've been watching for a while. You can hear our thesis on HIMX, HIMX Technologies. We have the bonus link to that video in our notes. When we're adding to our watch list, our top swing trading stocks to watch watch list is uh, this week is Pfizer, ticker symbol PFE. Uh, we had Pfizer on our shopping list and going through my shopping list at the end of the day on Friday. It looks like Pfizer's coming down to our uh, support level. Looks like it's uh, multiple touches on a support level. And uh, Pfizer is also a dividend payer. So it's been beaten down, uh, you know, with the... Uh, disinterested uh, lack of interest in the vaccine since the pandemic and it looks like uh, it might be approaching a nice uh, buy level and again it is a dividend payer as well so we can hold uh, Pfizer and wait for it to swing back up again you can hear more of our discussion on Pfizer with via the bonus link to that video in uh, the notes Again, we had previously gotten stopped out of our position in TSLY. TSLY is the yield max, a monthly dividend payer on Tesla. So we've been looking to get back into um, TSLY. It's been slowly trending down. So we're watching for uh, Tesla to come back down to a support level or near its 52-week low at 152.37. Again, it's one of the yield maxes that we like, pays a monthly dividend. We took a price appreciation profit on TSLY and then got stopped out prior to the last ex-dividend date. Um, and we'll look at those ex-dividend dates again uh, when we get to our dividend payers. You can hear our discuss discussion of TSLY via the link to that bonus video uh, in our notes. If you would like to also get up updates, get access to our watch list Google Sheet, which we'll look at in a second, um, and also get uh, updates if I make any further changes to our watch list, you can get 24 by 7 access to our watch list Google Sheet by joining our Patreon. 
And again, you can hear how you can use our watch list Google Sheet to watch our top swing trading stocks to watch uh, via this links to this series of bonus videos in the notes. And we also have a watch list channel in our Discord. So if I, that uh, Google Sheet gets automatically updated at the end of each day, if I make a subsequent um, update to our watch list, I post it in the stocks watch list channel in our discord which again our um, patreon members have access to so you can see when we added gdxd on the previous spike in uh, gold uh, we added that in the stocks watch list channel in our discord alan krantz is asking if i think oil is going to be in play or well, i'll just take a, a brief second talk about the global tensions in the Gulf, um, yes, I think this is going to cause a number of volatility in a number of areas. Again, uh, increased volatility, obviously oil uh, energy in play. I think Easy Mike was mentioning a shipper Zim. I think some of the shipping, they've talked about possibly closing the Straits of Hermos, etc. cetera. Uh, additional tensions in the Gulf is going to cause, again, volatility. May cause, you know, a flight to safety early on Monday. Um, so we did a, a video a while back, a game plan video uh, called, you know, War, What Is It Good For? Uh, from the song where the answer is absolutely nothing. And we talked about kind of the strategies around uh, conflict uh, relative to um, the uh conflicts in the Middle East, etc. So I'd recommend you go go uh, revisit that video as well, uh, where we talk about some of the stocks that may go up versus down, flight to safety, etc. Uh, due to uh, any kind of war. So again, here's our Google Sheet with our top swing trading stocks to watch watch list. So you can see our what's uh, our stocks we're watching in our top swing trading stocks to watch watch list. Our Google Sheet also contains our price targets, uh, tracking of the current price with a slight delay, 20 minute delay or so. Uh, using Google Finance functions, you can see the risk reward profiles, links to their profiles in FinBibs, also earnings dates, ex-dividend information, dividend yield information, optionality information, um, etc. So again, a quick and easy way to, to watch our top swing trading stocks to watch uh, using our Google Sheet, which again, you can access uh, by joining any level, level of our Patreon. So let me quickly look at those uh, charts in Weeble as well. So I'm using the online browser version of Weeble. Again, you can have all kinds of different watch lists. So here's our top swing trading stocks to watch watch list. Here's GDXD. Again, I've gotten in you know, significantly earlier, and it's declined with the surge in gold prices. And again, when we saw that rejection on Friday from the 2400 level, GDXD popped up. Again, it's popped up a couple times recently. So if you're a short-term day trader, scalper, uh, there's plenty of uh, good opportunities uh, with GDXD, short gold, and GDXU to long gold. Again, uh, you can flip those uh, leverage ETFs, make some money. I know several of our beach bump traders are, have made some money uh, in GDXD, GDXU pair. HIMX, and this is the semiconductor we've been watching. Again, you see it dipped down to that 522 level uh, late on Friday. So again, uh, that's pretty much the support level we were watching. I've been watching the level twos. Uh, we'll see if the level two shows decent support at that level. Uh, if so, we'll probably go long on HIMX um, on Monday. Here's Pfizer. Again, Pfizer's been in decline for you know quite some time. You see the low on Pfizer, about 25.38 or so. It's kind of sitting at that support level. It's touched that support level a couple times. So uh, our price target right now on Pfizer is at 52-week low at 25.61. 
got a halfway decent risk reward, you know, not really the two to one we'd like, but halfway decent and it does pay a dividend. So we're willing to consider that. Again, we use TSLA, Tesla's chart to determine our entry point into TSLY. So you see the 52-week low on Tesla. It's not quite there. If we get a little bit of a dip down, uh, then again, we'd like to pick up a TSLY. See, the last ex-dividend date was 4-4, April 4th. So in a second, we'll look at when the next uh, announced ex-dividend date is for the yield maxes. But it'll probably be uh, around May 4th or so. And you can see it last paid $0.68, cents, $0.81. Cents. So the dividend does vary quite a bit. Okay, let me grab a quick drink and we'll talk uh, about our bullpen stocks. Okay, if you're new to our Beach Bum Trading community, the concept of uh, bullpen stocks is a secondary list of stocks that don't quite have the swing trading setup that we'd like for a top swing trading stocks to watch, watch list, uh, but they may in the near future. So we put them in the bullpen, revisit them periodically. If their setup improves, then we put them in the game, move them up to our top swing trading stocks to watch watch list. If they break down or run away, then we just take them out of the bullpen. So one we've had in the bullpen for a little while is CRT, Cross Timbers Royalty Trust. You can hear our previous discussion due diligence on CRT via the link to that bonus video in the notes. We're going to take EPV out of the bullpen. EPV is the short on Europe, leverage short on Europe. We saw yesterday the Euro stocks had rolled over already. So uh, EPV has already run up some. So again, we'll take that out of our uh, bullpen for now. Again, you can hear how we use EPV EURL to trade Europe via the link uh, to that video in, in the notes. And again, we can always track uh, those ETFs in our ETF uh, Google Sheet as well. So we also have a sheet in our watch list Google Sheet with our bullpen stocks with similar information. So you can see I'd kind of like CRT around 1250. If we look at uh, the chart in Weeble as well. So we can see 1237 is kind of the 52-week low. It just recently dipped down to 1248. Again, they had some unusual expenses in some of their oil fields, so it plummeted pretty dramatically. Uh, it looks like it's stabilizing, so if I zoom in a little bit more. So it looks like we'll see if it holds that support. Right now it's getting rejected off that pivot point. And it looks like it may hold that support. So we'll see uh, if we need to come up to around 13, 10, 13 or so on uh, CRT or if it's going to retest that uh, previous low. Got plenty of time. Um, we'll look at CRT also dividend payers and we'll check their dividend payment information. Welcome, David Worrell, trading part-time. Thank you for joining us. Glad to see you. Hope you all are doing well. 
Okay, I'm going to come back to this EGRX. Uh, I want to get to our dividend payers. If we have time, then we'll look at EGRX, our honorable mention stock for this week. Also, um, given the uh, global tensions, the conflict in the Middle East, again, we may see a, a flight to safety. We may see a, a drop in the market, uh, fear, um, panic, you know, on a uh, fears of uh, expanding conflict, we'll, we'll see, uh, but that wouldn't be terribly surprising to see a little bit of a panic. In fact, I put in our uh, beginner's, beginner's Guide to Trading watch list, you know, our Hitchhiker's Guide to Trading uh, a previous video called Don't Panic. So please go see that, Beach Bump Traders Don't Panic, uh, but they're our potential opportunities so you want to have your shopping list ready so if some some of the stocks you always want to be able to scoop up at a cheap price uh do nosedive on a panic uh, have your shopping list ready uh, we'll show you our shopping list in a second again we just recommend you stay away from zombie companies zombie stocks zombie etfs if you're not familiar with what those terms mean um, you can uh, get further information about what they mean and why we recommend staying away from them via those links to those videos in the notes. Again, we're not financial advisors. None of our content should be considered financial advice. All of our content is for education and hopefully some entertainment purposes only. So again, in our watch list Google Sheet, we also have a tab with our shopping list of stocks. So you can see what we kind of have on our shopping list, and I can periodically monitor these during the day. We see the price changes, so if we see somebody really drop and they come close to our uh, price targets, then that's something we can watch. That's uh, one of the things that identified Pfizer so if I adjust that to their 52-week low, they're probably going to come up green. So put that to their 52-week high. So Pfizer had popped up green, says, hey, this is something to pay attention to. So I did a little bit of a further analysis on Pfizer, said, yep, that's one we want to add to our watch list. So we've also got TSLY already on our watch list, and we already own APLY, which is the yield max on Apple. So we also have you know, some standard dividend payers, JEPI, JEPQ, some other REITs that we typically watch. We're already long land. We watch O, STAG, LTC. Those are all REITs that we have on our shopping list. Uh, we watch MP Materials. I know several of our traders who are Watching MP Materials had positions in MP Materials, also uranium, oil, etc. So again, uh, another way, and you can, if, if you're a member of our Patreon, you can make a copy of our watch list Google Sheet, use it to construct your own watch list, your own shopping list, etc. Uh, they just won't get your updates to the gray columns uh, that are updated by our automated system. So again, we hope that all helps. Easy Mike, yeah, that's one of one of my thesis on the potential upside in Pfizer is they, you know, they have a lot of cash. Um, they could go buy uh, somebody, and they probably need to refill their uh, drug pipeline. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if to see acquisitions coming out of Pfizer, and that would uh, be a potential catalyst as well. Okay, I want to get into our dividend paying stocks uh, as we have uh, several additions uh, to our dividend payers Google Sheet. So let me grab a quick drink and we'll talk about our dividend payers. If anybody in the chat has a particular dividend payer you want to look at, uh, please throw those up in the chat. Um, I do want to cover the ones uh, that we've added to our sheet for this week.
Okay, just a quick reminder as well, if you'd like to have 24 by 7 access to our dividend payers Google Sheet, which you can use to construct your own schedule of dividend payers that meets your uh, dividend requirements, your risk board profile, um, you can again get 24 by 7 access to our dividend payers Google Sheet, as well as our ETFs Google Sheet and our puts ROIC options strategy google sheet by joining our patreon at the all access or vip level so again firstly i want to go over some additions that we've added to the ad sheet firstly uh easy mike mentioned a couple in yesterday's um, live chat that i want to go over uh, one is bwtg and then cefs cefs i believe is that closed end um, fund uh, dividend payer. So we'll take a look at those first. So here's BWTG. Actually, let's look at SCEFFs first, which is the Saba Closed End Fund. And you can access, you know, so we can see the risk reward profile here in our Google Sheet, pays a 14 cent. A monthly dividend so you see the risk reward right now it's a, a little bit high so it's at 1990 52 week high is 2067 so it's a risk reward profile for 52 weeks only about 1.25 bottom to top 1.9 almost two you can see its performance has been positive so i um we can look at the profile in Finviz. So it's Saba closed end funds. So again, we can see it's pretty high. Got rejected off that upper trend line, dipped down to its support line. So you can see it pays about 14 cents a month or so. We can look at the profile. So provide capital appreciation, dividend income, actively manage DTF. Closed end funds. So it's an ETF comprised of closed end funds. Typically, you, you, there, you have to invest in an individual closed end fund. And again, sometimes they close it. So you can see what the composition is. So mostly miscellaneous, which is probably those closed-end funds, 44% other, 6% cash, which because of that, I also put the link to their profile in the ETF database here in our ad sheet in the notes. So we can also look at their profile in the ETF database real quickly. So you see they don't really have a lot of information here right now. But we can see it's active. It doesn't have an index. It's closed-end funds. You can see the expense ratio, about 6%. Proprietary weighting scheme. If we try to look at their holdings, so we can see uh, it's got you know a number of other trusts, et cetera. So again, you can go through their holdings in the profile in the ETF database and see the actual funds uh, that they're invested in and their percent allocation. So it's pretty high allocation into this BlackRock, BlackRock ESG uh, capital term trust. So again, another way you can actually see what they're invested in. And again, that might be something you know that you might be interested in. Net yield's pretty good, 17.7%. So again, not a lot of upside. It's pretty close to its 52-week high. So possibly, you know, it might uh, might be better to wait till it gets a little bit cheaper. But again, it's a pretty good uh, performance for the year, 9%. Uh, nominal yield, 9%. And a net yield of almost 17 point, uh, almost 18%. So... And you know, Easy Mike's pointing out it's you know it's expensive, but the closed end is key. So again, if you have further uh, comments you'd like to make on that, we'd love to hear it, Easy Mike. So the other one he mentioned yesterday, but it was B BWTG. Uh, this is kind of a new one, Brendan Wood Top Gun ETF. 
So you can see the risk reward profile of it. Again, this is relatively new. It's pretty, pretty high as well, pretty close to its 52 week high. If we look at its profile in Finviz. So again, relatively new. We don't have a lot of history. We only have one dividend payment, which was uh, five cents in December. Not really sure. Looks uh, somewhat illiquid, you know, choppy. It's pretty high right now. You can look at what its uh, profile says. Seek to provide growth consistent with preservation of capital. Publicly listed equities, model portfolio. Approximately 1,400 companies composing the Brendan Wood Shareholder Conviction Universe. Liquid large and mid cap companies trade on a national exchange, etc. So the profile, you see it's pretty, pretty distributed across sectors. A lot of technology, com commercial services, finance, retail. So pretty broad diversification across those segments. You see its top holding is NVIDIA, ASML, Progressive, CrowdStrike, Amazon, Alphabet, Microsoft. So it's a pretty heavy still in the MAG7. So that probably attributes for it being as high as it is right now. I did also put the link to their, or I looked at them in the ETF database and there's essentially no information because it says it's too new. So again, we've got the risk reward profile. Uh, again, we don't have a lot of performance. It has been positive this year, 9%. So it's showing a 9% net yield. Again, it's pretty high. So the adjusted yield is pretty low, only 4%. And again, we only have, you know, one dividend payment. So I'm not really sure if they're going to do quarterly or um, or on a, a different schedule. And so, so far, it doesn't look like it's going to be monthly. So, um, again, I hope that all helps. Again, if uh, Easy Mike or anyone else has additional comments or experience with either BWTG or CEFS, uh, please put them in the comments to this video or in our Discord. Again, let us know if you think this is something that we should possibly add to our uh, primary dividend payers Google Sheet. Um, or again, we can watch, particularly as I'd like to see more history on BWTG, uh, but we can watch that in the ad sheet and our dividend payers as well. So I hope that all helps. Good morning, Sydney Osborne. Thank you for joining us. Hope you're doing well. Okay, the second set of additions to our dividend payers Google Sheet that I want to go over were ones that were part of a video posted by Joseph Hogue. So thank you to Joseph Hogue for pointing out these potential additional dividend payers to us. So the ones that we didn't already have in our dividend payers list that I added and we'll quickly go over, take a look at is SLRC, SLR Investment Corp. Most of these are uh, BDCs, which are business development corporations, um, with the exception of ARLP, which is a, a resource and energy partners um, LP. So we'll take a look at each of those. Uh, PSFL, PFLT, which is Pennant Park Floating Rate uh, Capital. And we've got two of these pennant parks. So there's PFLT and PNNT. They have slightly different approaches uh, to their investments. And then we also have uh, Goldman Sachs BDC, which is GSBD. So again, I've added each of those to our dividend payers Google Sheet. So you can see each of those, the risk reward profiles. 
their current uh, net yield, adjusted yield, etc. So several of these uh, look uh, pretty interesting in terms of their potential net yield. Uh, pretty high performance. So this uh, pennant, um, the PNNT, had a performance over the past year of almost 35%. Uh, Goldman Sachs, about 9%. So again, some of the yields on these look pretty attractive. You see the risk reward profiles pretty balanced. These uh, again seem pretty stable. So you can see the different monthly or quarterly uh, dividend payment schedules, how much they pay, etc. So we've got a you know a variety of performance, pro variety of dividend payment information. So let me quickly uh, flip through those in the FinBiz profiles. So first is SLR Investment Corp. So you see it recently dipped a bit. You see the dividend payment information, etc. You can go to their profile and see uh, it's a BDC, secured do uh, debts, uh, first, first lien. First lien on Unitrad and second lien subordinate debt, etc. So, part of uh, your evaluation of these various BDCs, I would recommend, you know, looking at what type of debt, what type of companies are they investing in. Uh, but again, since capital is is scarce um, from banks at high interest rates, uh, several of these BDCs, you know, they're lending. They're probably doing pretty well. Want to make sure that the companies they're investing in, you know, they're not uh, poor, high risk, uh, not zombie companies, etc. That they're going to eventually be able to pay back those debts. So look at a couple of the pennant parks. So here's the floating rate capital one. Again, look, I recommend comparing the definitions of these see if that's something that's again it's bdc secondary direct debt equity loan investments through floating rate loans small cap mid middle cap so again i'd recommend evaluating you know the details of these uh, in addition to their risk reward profiles and see which ones fit uh, your risk tolerance as well as your uh, dividend uh, income needs. Pennant Park, PNNT, private equity fund, direct and mezzanine investments in middle market. So again, slightly different investment strategy, senior secured loans, mezzanine debt, in buildings, real estate. So again, some some risk there in terms of commercial real estate. So uh, if, if that's something you're concerned about, this might not be a, a good choice for you. Goldman Sachs, again, very stable. And it's a BDC, middle market mezzanine investment, private companies. So these are non-public companies. So Again, an opportunity to uh, invest in uh, private companies, kind of like the uh, crazy run we saw in that D DXYZ, was it? Uh, I think they're also investing in private companies. And the last one, ARLP. Again, this is the only one that's not a BDC. This is a thermal coal energy company. So again, a different type of investment if you're interested in a dividend payer uh, based on, you know, thermal coal. Uh, we've seen, you know, sector rotations in and out of coal so far this year. Risk reward or the performance hasn't been very good. Um, but, you know, it's showing a net yield of 14.5%, adjusted yield of 15.5%, pays a 70 cent quarterly dividend. Uh, so, got a risk reward profile about 1.4. You can see all of these are relatively stable. Don't have a whole lot of upside in terms of um, risk reward profile to the upside in the 
in the near term, longer term, you know, top to bottom they do. Uh, right now, you know, this pendant is showing somewhat attractive based on a, a support level around six, but 52 week low is 470, so it's still relatively high. So, again, thank you to Joseph Hol Hogue for uh, identifying these for us. Uh, we're going to look in more detail at these guys, see if any of these uh, warrant moving up to our main dividend payer sheet. So we'll, again, do a little bit further analysis. Again, they're all relatively high. Don't have a lot of uh, upside risk reward profile-wise. So I'm going to think about those a little more and see if we should uh, move those to our main sheet. Love to hear your feedback. If any of you have any experience with any of these dividend payers, any recommendations, if you think we should put these in our main dividend payer sheet, uh, love to hear from you. Please put them in your in the comments below, in our Discord, etc. Let us know what you think of these additional dividend payers. And if you think we should uh, add those to our systems, add them to our main dividend payer sheet. Okay, if anybody in the chat has other any other dividend payers you'd like to look at, uh, please throw those tickers back up in the chat. I'll grab a quick drink and we'll whip through uh, the remainder. Okay, um, we all already pointed out we're st still long APLY. We talked about the yield max uh, dividend payment schedule. So again, you can find the distribution schedule for all the div uh, yield maxes in the reference sheet in our dividend payers Google sheet. So if we go look at the distribution schedule, last dividend date, X dividend was 4-4. So the next X dividend date is 5.6. So this applies, again, to all the uh, yield maxes. So you can see currently available and, you know, growing list of yield maxes. Looks like they just came out with a new one that might be kind of interesting to look at at some point called AI option income. I, I don't know what that is. Just saw it. So maybe uh, next week or in the near future. We'll take a look at that. They keep adding uh, more of these yield maxes. So we have quite a few of them in our dividend payers Google sheet. So some of the ones we watch typically APLY, OARC, which is the one on ARC, TSLY, the one on um, Tesla. If you don't find it in the main dividend payer sheet, we also, you can search what I do is I search for yield max. And then you can find the, the various. Yield maxes in our um, ad sheet as well. So you can see we've got the Apple, the Amazon, the Meta, Google, Netflix, NVIDIA, OARC. And again, we can keep an eye on those. I've been looking at uh, FBY, but uh, it's showing close to a support level, but it's still relatively high. Um, again, we're watching OARC. If ARC-K comes down some, that might be interesting. Um, we're already long APLY, and as we pointed out, we're watching TSLY. Um, again, the ones on the ad sheet, uh, the support resistance, et cetera, data doesn't get automatically updated. I have to do that manually. And then if uh, they become more interesting, more attractive to us, we'll put them in the main sheet. So again, I know we've got APLY, OARC, and TSLY in our main sheet already. So these others, mortgage REITs, I uh, don't like that. These guys are losing money. High max, we're watching. They only have an annual dividend, so we're already watching that. Hershey, 
IEF and I, IEI, very stable. So if you're looking for something stable based on bonds, IEF and IEI might be of interest to you. Iridium sluice and money. We're still long land. Leg is losing money. Clip is based on China. We have a video that discusses our views on Clip. Again, we're watching some of these our, uh, REITs, O, STAG, NSA, etc. Here's O, ARC. So again, if it comes down a little bit, that might become uh, pretty attractive. Talked about TSLY. S ball on volatility. Uh, this one's underperforming, so you can see the net yield's pretty negative on the declines on TLT. So there's TSLY, UDN on the dollar. EFC, I think they're uh, losing money. Okay, just last check on the chat, see if I missed anything. Ricky Khan's mentioning several other yield maxes he's in. So, okay, let's talk about option strategies very quickly in addition to dividend payers. We also have several option strategies we use uh, to generate additional income while we wait for our top string trading stocks to watch to set up. We sell covered calls against our positions when they're going up, buy them back when they're coming down. We sell puts when something's going down, buy it back when it's going back up. And we use our puts ROIC Google Sheet to help us identify opportunities to sell and buy back puts. And again, you can get access to this puts ROIC Google Sheet by joining our Patreon. We also have a whole series of videos on how you can use this puts ROIC Google Sheet to identify opportunities to sell and buy back puts. I don't really have any changes to this this week. Again, we did see a pop in the VIX, so some of the premiums are becoming more attractive. So we'll keep an eye. I also rolled the expiration dates to May. Uh, see if we could pick up some, some better ROICs. See, Tesla's starting to get somewhat attractive, but most of them still pretty low. We'll see if we get a spike in the VIX on Monday, if that uh, makes some of these puts um, more attractive. So again, you can see some of them are perking up a little bit. Albemarle, uh, 1%. Caesars, 3%. 3%. It's pretty close to that um, strike level. So again, some of these are starting to look potentially attractive. They may be, may be of interest to you if uh, you want, you're willing to take, you know, less than 5% uh, ROIC match. Sam, Sam Adams, beer, that's solar. And UAL is one we've got, we're watching it for the January uh, 2025 strike. So it's still pretty low. Also, we added this YOU, this Clear Secure. We uh, have a video uh, talking about our discussions on Clear Secure. ROIC is not real high right now. Another one we're kind of watching. So if anyone would like us to do uh, research on an additional put, just let us know the ticker, the strike price, the expiration date. We can plug it into our systems and um, collect the uh, options data into our Google Sheet. Again, all the gray columns are uh, collected by our automated system, updated at the end of each day, and we can see the ROIC uh, for those. And again, we'll, we'll see. We might get a spike in the VIX on this uh, global conflict issues, and then uh, some of these puts might become attractive, you know, even as early as Monday. So we might have to watch these in real time if we see a, you know, plummet. The green colored ones mean stocks going down. So we would be looking to sell puts on the ones in green. If we already sold one and it's showing in red, then uh, it means it's going up. So we might want to look at sell, uh, buying back our puts uh, on those. So 
Again, we hope this all helps. If you have recommendations for improvement for any of our Google Sheets, or we'd love to hear them. Okay, I've got a, just a couple minutes. So I did want to take a quick look at this honorable mention stock that uh, came up in several of our uh, queries, EGRX, Eagle Pharmaceuticals, Inc. So let me grab a quick drink and we'll do just a very quick uh, due diligence on EGRX, Eagle Pharmaceuticals. Okay, let's first look at EGRX and FinViz. Like I closed all my FinVizes, so just a quick reminder, you can find links to all the tools and resources we typically use in the links section on our homepage, beachbumtrading.com, bum without the U. So we'll look at it in FinViz, and then we'll also quickly look at it in ChartMill as well. So here's EGRX, Eagle Pharmaceuticals. Again, it's a drug manufacturer, U.S.-based drug manufacturer. You can see it showed up. Um, I think it showed up on the multiple bottoms screener that I talked about on the um, front page of Finviz. See, it's kind of oscillating around that multiple bottom. Had a big drop on probably earnings, pre-announcement on earnings, but it, they do look like they're making money doesn't pay a dividend, is optionable, debt's not too bad, uh, 12 million in, in shares outstanding, so not a real high float, 10% uh, short interest, so a little bit of short interest. See, a, a crash, stock crashed after the CEO resigned. So that looks like that's the reason for the crash. So uh, potentially, you know, some significant recovery. We can see what they do. Again, biotech, pharmaceutical company, commercializing injectable products, metabolic, cr critical care, oncology, so cancer. So they've got, you know, a number of products um, commercialized already. So it looks like the CEO was the founder and he recently left. So you might want to know some of the details of the reason for the, him leaving. But they do, uh, does look like they make money, have recently made money. A couple years ago, they lost money. Look at the recent quarters. So again, all the recent quarters are positive this year. EPS positive this year, so that doesn't look too bad. So profitable drug manufacturer, kind of somewhat rare. So, you know, plenty of potential upside. So right now it's sitting at four. So we see that's pretty, pretty stable at four. Let's look at the cash per share, 1.18, so not too bad. Might be worth doing a quarter's cash flow um, positive analysis on them. Maybe we'll come back next week and uh, use our due diligence Google Sheet to also do a quarter's cash flow positive. I look at them very quickly in chart mill. See the TA rating right now is zero. Setup rating is average. Growth's pretty low. Health's a little weak. Valuations a little above average, profitability above average. Get their fundamentals real quickly. 
So fundamental four out of 10, excellent on profitability, some minor concerns on financial health, valuation in line. So valuation's pretty good, profitability's good, health's a little weak, growth's pretty weak, so definitely not a growth stock, no dividend. We look at their Altman Z score, return on capitals, okay. Solvent C, okay, so 1.94 Altman Z, so, so not a great score, but limited risk of bankruptcy, so again, uh, it doesn't look like they have a solvency issue. It's a little fundamental. It's a little bit weak. Technically, 0 out of 10. Technical rating. Setup rating 5 out of 10. So, um, again, it doesn't look like a, a bad setup right now uh, with that, you know, multiple touches on the bottom. So, uh, again, I thought I'd bring that to your attention. It does look like they're profitable. Uh, looks like they don't have solvencies ish, solvency issues, so this might be one that we'll want to uh, consider watching uh, going forward. Again, it might be worth um, some further analysis uh, as to why the CEO left, future catalysts, etc. Um, so a little further due diligence uh, might be warranted. If anyone has any other experience with EGRX opinions, uh, we'd love to hear them. Again, put Put your uh, comments in the comments to this video below. Again, you can contact us in our Discord. We'd love to have you join our Discord. Our Discord is free to join. You have access to all the channels with the exception of the few I uh, mentioned before that are exclusive to our uh, Patreon members. Again, you can contact us in our Discord. or are Beach Bump Trading, all lowercase, all one word. Anyone else is an imposter, no other characters, numbers, dots, etc. And again, we'd love your feedback on, you know, what we can do to uh, improve any of our weekly trading game plans, any of our videos, any of our tools and resources, our community, etc. Uh, we also have a suggestion box in our Discord, so you can put your suggestions there. You can put them in the comments to this video. Also contact us via any of our social media sites and you can find links to our social media sites in the link section on our homepage, beachbumptrading.com. So again, we'd love your feedback. Thank you to everyone that was participated in the chat. We hope that you found this helpful. We hope that you like this video. Please smash the like button. Help us try to get the YouTube algorithm to share our content with uh, more traders. To help us continue to build our Beach Bump Trading community. And we'd greatly appreciate it if you would directly invite your fellow traders and friends to join our community. Join us in the chats. Join us in the Discord. And again, please uh, share our content. Repost our content. Again, uh, we need your help to help us continue to grow our Beach Bum trading community and improve our community for the mutual benefit of all of our fellow Beach Bum traders. So thank you again for watching. Thank you for your participation and support. And we wish you all good luck and have a great trading week.